Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, you're so big and handsome and happy. Forgot you were here. We got to superset this with some doggy pets, apparently. These are my boys. I have a two-minute rest period. <sighs> oh, really? Which means you can have, like, 60 seconds of pets. How deprived are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's a big boy. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just some casual tripping hazards in the gym. Oh, you bark and now you want to come over and say sorry? You're going to wake the neighbors if my grunts don't. I got to get ready for this set, okay? I got to get ready for this set. I got to lift this set here, okay? So thank you for the motivation, but I don't know that I really needed it. Goofballs. Good morning. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Got a, uh, got a good back day ahead of us. Back and biceps, doing some pulling movements today. And uh, we're gonna be starting off again with those chest supported rows that we've really been digging. Really been digging those. They've been, it's a, been a great addition to our normal workout routine. And it's been nice to have something kind of stable to, to just lean up against as we're pressing into those movements. It's really easy just to get into that mo moment of you know fatigue where you're really leaning back, heaving and hoeing in those. And I find that when you're on the chest supported pad, it, it really doesn't allow for a lot of that. But at the very least, it provides some sort of physical reminder of, hey, I've gotta, I've gotta keep myself strict here with my form. Gotta keep that ROM good. Gotta make sure we're not, you know, giving ourselves too much assistance, at least on those early reps and early sets. It's so neat. Apart from that, as you can see from today's workout, we're not doing anything too crazy today as far as big, big, big changes. Now, we're up in the rep ranges as compared to last week, and we're slightly reducing some of our rest periods as well, just to give our body a bit more of a taxing lift for that specific lift that we're executing. Slightly lower rest periods is, is not gonna be anything too crazy. I mean, we're talking literally like 15 to 30 seconds tops of a difference as compared to last week. Some of those are gonna be keeping the weight the same. Others, I just, you know, reading through my notes, it looks like the weight may have been a little bit too light there. So I've increased the weight slightly on some of that stuff. But overall, these lifts are gonna be staying the same. Nothing too crazy. Although we are gonna be upping the weight right out the gate for our chest supported rows today. Gonna be increasing that by at least 10 pounds to start. You might even go up to 20 pounds. We'll see how that feels. But I wanna keep really good strict form. So it's gonna be a huge focus for me to make sure we're keeping that form nice and strict. We're not doing anything too crazy to cheat those early sets and reps. And we're using consistent form throughout all of those, at least as best as we can until we get into those later reps. Additionally, with our landmine one-arm barbell rows, I'm gonna be trying to use one of those grips last week. You saw me use them on the pull-ups last week where I was using my pull-ups with those neutral grips that allow my hands to kind of rotate freely. I've got behind me here <clears throat> these grizzly handles that I've used from time to time. And these things are great for landmine work. In fact, it's really all they're good for is landmine work at all. You can't really use them for anything else. I'm sure you could find a way to rig these up on the lever arms or something like that, but I've never had to do that. Um, but we've got a couple different grips here. We've got this angled grip, and then we've got the grip on the top and a grip on the side of these things. I really like using these ones on the side for our landmine work. I just like the, the feel it gives. We're able to get in front of that weight as well. And our, our hand is gonna be nice and firmly planted on a barbell equivalent sized attachment, but it is slightly bigger than a barbell. I would wager that this is actually closer to two inches, um, but that's okay, it's not the end of the world. I use this from time to time. I don't use it every single time. I do find that being at different points of where that weight is, either behind the actual weight itself on the barbell like we did last week and like we're gonna do today, versus in front of it changes just the overall feeling that you're getting when you're executing those landmine rows. But today, rather than use these grizzly arms, we're gonna be staying behind that weight and we're gonna be using some of these, um, some of our D-ring attachments, just to see how that changes the overall feel of the movement and play with it a little bit, a little bit. It's not gonna be anything too drastic, but I am curious what the ability for our hand to move freely through that plane of motion is gonna do for that. All right, that's enough talking about it. Let's get after it. Let's get after today's workout. We've got, like I said, these chest supported rows that we're starting with. We're gonna get set up for that. We're gonna get the weight keyed up and we're gonna get right into these reps. I'll see you over there. All right, we've got 190 pounds keyed up here. Warm up felt pretty good. Let's get after these reps. Let's crank out 10 quality reps. Hit some good pull in there. Good. Continue to get warmed up. I ended up having my sweatpants off in between recording that intro and starting these warm-ups, and then I put them back on. I was just like, 
right at that temperature where, you know, things are like kind of warm, but not really. And you're like, oh, I don't want to overheat. I don't want to sweat too much because I hate wearing, I hate wearing sweaty clothes, especially long sleeve stuff or pants stuff. Oh, well, let's get after these. We'll probably take our shirt off here in a little bit just so we don't get too hot. I'll keep the pants on though. Good. That 10 pound increase is feeling great. Number two here. Come on, all the way back. All right, third and final set. Just realized we've been doing extra reps every single one of these, which I'm not gonna complain about, but might be why we're having such a hard time there. Uh. Uh. Come on. Okay, we got the eight. That's what we're supposed to be hitting anyway. Whew. Tell you what, man, I was reading uh, reading some forum posts yesterday, and somebody had asked, what's the point of somebody like Chris Bumstead or you know, whoever, top-level bodybuilders, paying for a trainer and a coach like Haney Rambod? That was the ex a specific example they gave with Bumstead and, and Haney. There were a couple good points. First and foremost, and what I think is probably the most impactful as the athlete, not even having to think about what you have to do. Just like someone's like, go do that. Do this, do this, this many reps, this, you know, you're lacking on this form, your ROM sucked here, pull it more, push it more, whatever, right? Somebody who can visually see, but also literally just guide you to the next thing so you don't have to think about that and your entire energy and focus can be on that lift. We can't overstate enough how impactful a, a divided attention can be on your overall workout. I mean, think about those workouts you've had where your mind's just somewhere else and how that lift sucked, how you weren't happy with it. Now imagine somebody was there just to tell you what to do and pushing you to the next item. It's a huge help. Another one that was pointed out too, and I think this is gonna resonate with a lot more of you, most of us who do any kind of lifting, having a person there to just push you, motivate you to the absolute limit is invaluable. Most of us know what it feels like to train to failure, but to go beyond failure in every single lift you do, that's what's required to become Mr. Olympia, right? To become a literal world champion in bodybuilding. Going beyond what's capable from a failure standpoint, from an RPE 10 standpoint. To do that for every single lift, I can't even imagine the mental fatigue and taxation that comes along with that. So you've got someone like Chris Bumstead who's doing that, that's his job, right? Is to push it to the limit. You need somebody like a Haney or any training partner at all to push you through that workout. You can't do it alone, at least not every day can't. So you need somebody like Haney who can get in there, push you, motivate you, tell you what to do, and ensure that you hit everything that you're trying to hit and achieve, knows your goals, and is going to do everything in their damn power to make sure that you don't start slipping back, cutting back on that stuff, giving up just a little bit. Okay, these felt great. I uh, got a little warm there, so we took the uh, sweater off. Let's see if it stays off. Let's get over here. Let's do some landmine rowing. Alrighty, we're gonna be using these grips again. This is the one I was talking about wrapping around the barbell and, and seeing what we can get out of this. Just kind of changing up that grip ever so slightly. I've really enjoyed this purchase. These grips have been one of the more versatile pieces of equipment I bought in a little while. Hi, hello, how are you? Good to see you again. Forgot you were here. Yep, certainly did. Definitely did. These grips were a great investment. They were less than 20 bucks on Amazon. They were a very cost-effective solution. This, uh, Little lanyard that comes with them can be pulled through on either side so that you're not getting, uh, you know, if you wrap this around something, you can adjust it so that you're not getting like a huge overlap in your hand. Right? Right? Great product reviews from everybody here at the gym, the Iron Clinic. <laughs> uh, but we're going to wrap this around the barbell and we're going to be using this to pull today. Still single arm movement. We're still going to be standing to the side of the barbell here um, for each of our hands. 
and we're gonna go for our rep. So we're going for 12. I got 90 keyed up on here, nothing too crazy. Let's see how this, uh, how much this affects the overall lift. There's one. We gotta superset this with some doggy pets, apparently. Good. Man, I like that. I like that. It definitely feels harder, but it's good. I have a two minute rest period. I've got like a minute and a half now, okay? Which means you can have like 60 seconds of pets. 60 whole seconds. How deprived are you? Oh boys. Oh boys. Oh, okay. Coming up, huh? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Goofballs. Okay. Second set. Same thing. This felt great. They really did. Let's do 12 more reps on each side. All right, left side struggled there a little bit. <sighs> All right, final set here. Let's see how this goes. That left side was tough last time. Really want to put a big emphasis on making sure we get some really good quality ramen there. So to that effect, we're gonna lower this weight down slightly. I would rather take a little bit more control than uh, suffer through with crappy reps. Okay, now we bumped it down 10 pounds. So we're at the 80 pounds right now. And this last set's gonna be a drop set again, just like we did last week. So we're gonna do our 12 reps. We're gonna take off some weight and we're gonna crank out as many more as we can. Good form now. So I've stacked the weights from, the, from this side all the way forward. We've got a 45, a 10, and then a 25. That way we can quickly throw off the 25 and continue our reps with as little downtime as possible. Let's do the right side first. Good, 25 off, <clears throat> going. <sighs> Come on. <sighs> wow, okay. I didn't think that was gonna get as tough as it did there. Holy cow. Okay, left side here. Too much. I'm gonna take 25 off preemptively. We're gonna finish our 12 and then take the 10 off with his left side. Good. Okay. Good, good. All right, we're doing the same thing as last week. Going to failure on these pull-ups with the band. Starting with our green boy this week. We started with orange last week. Uh, that was too much. So we're gonna start with green. And we're gonna be using our uh, hand grips instead of the handles this time. I wanna make sure we get a good contraction, not letting our grip fail. And I felt like towards the end there on those landmine one arm barbell rows, our grip was starting to fail a little bit. So I don't want that to be a factor at all on these today. 
Let's get after it. All the way to failure. Come on, one more. Okay, whoo. Good. Okay, set number two here. One minute of rest there. Let's see how that does us. Come on. Oh, okay. Whew. All right, we're gonna do one minute again. We're gonna go with the heavier band on this last set. One minute rest, heavier band. All right, now this band should be about 10 to 15 pounds heavier. It's not gonna be, uh, not, it's not gonna be a ton, it's enough though. It could be about 20 pounds total heavier-ish, a little bit less than that. According to the website, Elite FTS has a nice little diagram that has all the weights of their bands on it. And I have those written on my storage board over here on the pegboard that I store these on. So quick little reference. I don't use the weights too much, but it's just good to know. Good to know. Those heavy bands, man, they go up to what, 130, 140? That's crazy. That's nuts. All right, last set of pull-ups here. Heavier band, still going to failure. Let's do it. Oh, come on. Boy, fried. Those lats are done, dude. Wow. Whew. Okay. Pleased with those. Happy with those. Those were solid. We're going to get this put away. And we got some uh, rear delt flies, chest supported rear delt flies that we're going to do right here with the Bowflex dumbbells. I'll see you over there. Just some casual tripping hazards in the gym. How rude. Okay, we got these bad boys keyed up to 30 pounds, just like we did last week. We're going to do the same thing, going for 30 reps. This is going to be tough. Uh, these are tough. Actually, I think I had 25 last week. Yeah, I did. I had 25 on these last week. So we're up on this by five pounds on each dumbbell, which is not nothing. That's definitely not nothing. Uh, still wearing the wrist wraps. Going to keep these on. Make sure we don't lose grip on these. We can keep that full contraction on our rear delts and not losing that focus anywhere else in our hands, forearms, anything like that. Let's get after this. The really hard thing about these wraps is they are they're leather and they don't slip on these bow flex handles at all, which is a good thing. And also... When you're trying to get keyed up, a bad thing. All right, 30 reps, here we go. I think that's 20. Uh, whew. Goodness. Oh man, that was something. We said this uh, just a couple workouts ago, but man, that pump that we feel. And our rear delts back here when we do these things, those face pulls and these rear delt flies. Whew. It's such a good, like, oh, it can never be a bad pump. It's, you know, you get that lower back pump and it's debilitating, but that rear delt pump, God, that is so good. So good. Okay, set number two here. 30 more reps. Don't let them touch. Come on. Yeah. Oh. 
Two minutes. All right, third set here. Last one. Our, uh, our rear delts, man, are lit right now. <laughs> lit. We're gonna try to get really good ROM on these, though. We're gonna get a really good full range of motion all the way back. <sighs> Let's do this. All the way back, but not so far back. Oh, traps come into play. Come on. Okay, that's 18. We're low on the weight down. We're gonna do more. Come on. Come on. Take this down to 22 and a half. 22 and a half, 18, 19, come on, oh my god, done, done. Uh, all right, got some uh, incline curls to do here. So let's get after that. We got 40 keyed up, hammer curls here. These are the ones we're gonna start with some reduced rest periods. So we're going down to 40 second rest periods on these to start. And uh, we're not gonna go more than like a minute and a half, minute 45 on these. Let's do it. Five partials. Yeah. Good. Okay, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tough rest period right there. Wow. We'll see how we fare here, but uh, we might have to reduce the weight. Actually, I'm gonna do it proactively. I don't think we're gonna hit 40 again. We're gonna drop these down to 35, just so we can get the best squeeze and pump we can. Okay, set number two, same thing. 10, five partials, 35 pounds. Come on. Come on, five, 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 five. That's it. Oh boy, okay. Taking that rest period up, we're gonna go a minute and a half. No more than this though. Minute and a half. We're gonna reduce the weight down one more time. We're gonna go 25, 25 on these. Now, it's gonna be a big jump down, but if it's too light, we'll increase the reps up. We're still gonna do our partials, but uh, we'll, we'll compensate for the lower weight if we need to with some additional reps there, but that one was just way too heavy. And even with the additional rest right now, I'm not confident that we're gonna hit uh, what we want to. Oh, you bark and now you wanna come over and say sorry for being a loud voice? It's so early. You're gonna wake the neighbors if my grunts don't. Is that what you want? I don't think so. Hi, that's a big boy. Oh, you so big and handsome and happy. These are my boys. These are my boys. Two of the four. I've got four boys. I gotta get ready for this set, okay? I gotta get ready for this set. I gotta lift this set here, okay? So thank you for the motivation, but I don't know that I really needed it. I don't know, you guys tell me in the comments. Do I need that motivation? Let's go, 25. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm glad we reduced it. Was that nine or 10? I don't remember. That's 10 or 11 right there. Five parcels. Come on. Oh God. Brutal. Brutal. 
All right, so we're doing the same thing. So we're doing the same thing we did on that last exercise. We're gonna be reducing the rest period down, starting at 45 seconds. So we're not gonna be starting at a minute like we normally would. We're gonna start at a 45 second rest and then only go up to about a minute 45 tops if we need to increase it, just like we did on our hammer curls a second ago. Uh, 30 pounds keyed up here on the dumbbell. Let's do these concentration curls. Ugh, only doing eight reps here, but God, these are gonna be tough, I can tell. Yep. Come on. Eight. Couple of that with a low rest period and these are gonna be brutal. Woo. 45 seconds. Oh, really? Okay. Set number two, good 45 second rest. Oh, let's do it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Woo. All right, we got one more set of these bad boys. One more set of these curls. Then we got ab work to do. So I'm gonna be doing some cable crunches and some decline setups over there on the uh, GHD. Gonna do both sets of those, just really feel like hammering those abs home. But I'm gonna do that off camera just to save myself a little bit of time here. It's getting to be about that time. And I'm gonna finish this out, clean up a little bit in between my ab sets. I'm gonna try to get the gym a real clean today too. It needs a good mopping. It's been a couple weeks. I've been slacking on that. Thanks again for being here. I appreciate you guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff helps. Really appreciate the engagement. Appreciate the questions, the candor. All that stuff. I'll see you next time. I'm gonna finish this out. Take it easy. Come on. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a good RP 10 right there. Maybe 11 even. There's 10, RP 10. Oh.